What's happening, everybody? Mark Mude checking in on behalf of Billy Go Gruff and the Rock Billy Red Devils. Down here in my studio working. Ha! I'm kidding. I don't have a studio. I have a basement. I'm in the basement. You know who has studios? People with a lot more money than me. I have a I have a basement with a whole bunch of music stuff everywhere. But you know, you do the best you can with what you got, right? Right. Anyways, I am in the basement. I'm working on songs, putting them together to uh, put them on the album, A Simpler Time. That's going to be the debut CD for Billy Goat Gruff and The Rock Billy Red Devils. And I thought this would be a great time to make a video uh, showcasing how I work on songs. I have one song in particular that all I have for it so far is a melody line. Uh, and this is, this is what it starts out with. This is what I have to work with. I came up with that riff over the summer when I was, uh, playing guitar out in the garage, uh, practicing a few things and I liked the riff. So I thought, man, I can turn that into a song. And I decided that it's going to follow a 12-bar progression, standard rockabilly progression. Uh, this time it'll be in the key of A. And those chords would be uh, A, D, A, to E, back to A. And then it repeats itself. But like I said, all I have is that melody line. So what I'm going to do, I've already picked a tempo for it. Uh, and I have that set on the metronome and I'm going to record the guitar, the melody line, and then I'm going to switch over, put my bass guitar on and start developing a bass line for it because I don't have a bass line. I don't have uh, rhythm guitar lines figured out yet, uh, drums or vocals. I have small ideas. I know it's rockabilly, so that kind of narrows down the options for the uh, guitars and bass and everything else. And that helps, but beyond that, I uh, don't have anything going for it. <clears throat> so I'll record this on my loop station, switch over to my bass, and start figuring out some bass lines. And uh, I figured I would uh, let you guys see how I work, see how I do that. I don't know if everybody does it this way. I'm guessing they do, but uh, it's the way I do it. And, uh, and I hope you can find something entertaining in this video. And for you uh, other musicians who uh, are looking for ideas, well, this is how you can come about them, too. You, you go down in the basement, and you play this stuff, and you see what works. So let me get this uh, metronome going. I have it right here. Nice and loud. Hallelujah. That way I can keep in time. I, I get out of time a lot. A lot of times when I'm playing guitar, I stop paying attention. I start thinking about other stuff, and I get lost. So... Anyways, let me get a let me get this track going and we'll get this party started. to develop other parts. I'm not going for quality right now. Whoops, those are some bad notes. <clears throat> you know what? I'm going to re-record that. That's just a little too shaky there during the uh, last transition. But that's how we do it. I don't know how other guys make videos. My videos, you're going to get... This is, this is the process. This is what I'm showing you. This, I've been playing guitar for 40 years and there's, I'm still making mistakes. For you guys that are beginners or intermediate, there, there are mistakes made all the time. Again, don't fall for studio magic. They fix this stuff. In the studio, they fix it, they take it out. On my video, it's going to stay in. 
you know, I, I, this, is, this is the way it works in the real world. So let me try that again. Let me get this metronome kicking, and I'll try not to screw it up. How's that sound? to that make sure it's good enough that sounds good wait oh uh, yeah I think I can work with that again if it was if I was going for studio quality I'd record it cleaner than that another important thing to remember when you guys are uh, working out parts make sure your instruments are in tune with each other uh that that makes it a little easier let me step off camera get my coffee here that's an integral part of everything i do is coffee you'll figure that out eventually so anyways like i was saying i don't have bass lines figured out yet but it's standard rockabilly so that gives me a starting point i know i'm going to be an a and uh there are certain movements you can do. You know, you fine tune them. You, you, you change the phrasing a little bit, but it's all kind of in the same space. So I'm gonna start this, this melody line and start trying to figure out uh, a bass line that'll work with it and support it. One of the things I'm looking for, the melody line, when you listen to this, it sounds kind of lazy to me. Like that first note, he's not in a hurry to get there. He's just like, sneaks into it you know kind of a laid-back slow just a lazy line so I'm gonna try and figure out a nice lazy bass line that'll uh, go along with that I don't want to overplay so we'll see what happens I'm gonna just start it and play along with it and figure out what works and what doesn't work and we'll see how it goes huh <laughs> This would be a standard walking bass line for the uh, blues and rockabilly. But I don't think I like it. It's a whole lot of movement. I'm going to try a few other things. sounds a little too busy for me. I don't think that's going to work either. Line, I like this one. The it seems to uh, support that melody line. So now what I'm going to do 
is record the bass line <coughs> and then uh, work on guitar parts on top of that bass line. Again, the only thing that's so far set in stone is that melody line. So whatever happens to support that happens. The bass line is very rudimentary and basic right now. When it gets to the recording stage, then I will offer more variety, change up the phrasing and pattern. You know, I don't want it to be the exact same pass after pass after pass. But when I'm working on putting parts together, it's plenty good enough. All right, I'm going to get this metronome kicking again. We'll record this bass line and then switch back over. Baseline, we show off this metronome. I think it's annoying pretty quick, doesn't it? You guitar players and bass players, make a note. I'm using a pick to play that bass line, but that's just so I can get a nice, clean, clear, concise note. I don't want to muddle up what I'm working on. When it comes time to record it, I'll decide whether it needs to be uh, fingers guitar pick who knows maybe slap and pop maybe just a slap bass stand-up bass I'll decide that as the song develops and progresses but for practice purposes I needed a nice clean bass line so I used the guitar pick let me switch my channels here what I'm gonna do at this point is uh, try and figure out rhythm patterns that uh, again are going to support that melody line i don't want to overshadow that melody line let me shut that bass off i don't want to overshadow the melody line so i need to find a, a rhythm pattern that supports it and to help narrow down that search we can start by using the notes that are in the melody line So, so I want to find chords that have those notes in them. And it's standard chord. There's nothing tricky there. There's only a few notes. So you have a lot of options. A lot of times the more notes you use when you're playing, the it, less options you have at your disposal. So anyways, I'm going to play the bass line and I'm going to experiment with some rhythm guitar parts and see what works. Here we go. Just a repeat of the melody line, really. really. Probably too much of that melody line in there. cool when I'm, I'm noticing when I listen to it I slide up to the chord and it sounds like there's a humming like a like backing vocals in there let me let me let me play that see if you guys can hear it hear that it almost sounds like a vocal Just on the low notes, though. That's cool. I can't unhear it now.
less of this with that as the rhythm it seems like it's a little too busy maybe uh it's really following that mel melody line pretty pretty strongly and the melody line itself is really strong i don't think it needs that much emphasis but i, I do like that hum sound i i can't not hear it now once i've heard it and it sounds cool what i was doing is i would i would strike it down here and slide up to it and then strum the other strings and let those low notes keep ringing without strumming them see how i'm doing that and you can still hear it it, it rings out without the uh interruption of a, a pick strike anyways let me go ahead and record it and then i'll play the melody line over it and see if that works are you sticking with me on this are you still here all right let's go I tried to record it and play it in a manner that it emphasized that that low end and, and that humming that I'm, I'm hearing. That could be an idea for a vocal track in there, back backup vocals just doing that kind of like a bebop <coughs> um, type vocal section. That might be cool. You don't know. That can work. Coffee break again. I go through the coffee seriously three to five pots a day i love that stuff it's a great source of inspiration for me hmm. anyways what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go ahead and play that back and i'm gonna to uh experiment with the melody line and see what else develops as we go let's go you ready me too <laughs> times you have to you have to play what the song requires uh i think because that melody line is so busy so strong and as it is now with the rhythm guitar supporting it it might not need a, a lead break or anything fancy i mean there's there were some cool notes that could work with that but it might not need it i think i think it's going to be a very vocal strong song very heavy on the vocals and and I don't think it's going to require much fancy instrumentation to support it. <clears throat> the only thing that I would I like I'm really noticing is that there's again that the laziness to that uh, slide up that that loping intro there. It's like 
like that guy's not in any hurry to get to the party. Uh, I like that, and I, I like that low end hum on that slide up. Maybe that that right there could be the rhythm guitar just do that on its own maybe add in some other strikes just some real low strumming that's cool that might be all it takes a lot of times musicians get carried away trying to uh, overdo it you know a lot of times they insist on doing something super cool or or you know like the the ego gets in the way a lot you know they try to come up with something that's impressive and other times it's like you should just concentrate and come up with something that's good for the song <clears throat> anyways you know this is this has been a pretty cool little 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 video to make open the doors and let you see the the process to piecing together song parts or at least how I do it I don't know how other people do it entirely a lot of times when I'm writing songs I'm working with other musicians and and you you know you play a part over and over while they experiment with something and then they play a part over and over while you experiment but when you have a loop station you can just create your own parts and they can play forever I'll I'll, I'll, I'll stop the video here now because I can do this for hours and I will before this song's done I'll probably play along with it for 10 15 20 hours or more like I said I came up with the part over the summer that was six seven months ago and I just haven't gotten back to developing it any further I just knew that I liked that melody I think it's really cool and that melody strong enough it's kind of going to dictate the whole rest of the song and it's just a matter of finding the parts that go with it and where they're going to go. And that's not hard to do once you, once you have, have something that's so concrete to work with. Anyways, that's how I do it. I hope you liked it. Matter of fact, you can like the video. You can share it. Leave some comments. Let me, let me know your opinions on the parts that I'm coming up with. Maybe you have some ideas and... Maybe you can say, you know, it, it, it needs a lead break or it doesn't need a lead break. Maybe you can tell me if the rhythm was too much with the melody line or the bass line wasn't active enough. Give me some ideas. It's still in the very early stages uh, of creation. You can share the video. Did I say that already? You can subscribe to my channel. That would be awesome. And then you can, you can ring the bell to get notifications because I'm making a lot of videos. Uh, anyways, this is Mark Mude on behalf of Billy Goat Gruff and the Rockabilly Red Devils. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.